the Moro chess sets. I'm Rick and my website is ancientchess.com. It's all about styles of chess that have evolved all over the world. And this is the Moro chess design. This is what the knights look like. Very unusual and beautiful. Where they're from it's called the Okir design. It's used in royalty um, buildings of, of royal figures, um, how, buildings of special uh, significance, and in chess sets. The other pieces are more of a traditional Muslim design. Typical Muslim sets of that era are various turned shapes. They're actually different shapes. This is a Muslim set I'm showing you now actually from Rajasthan, India. And um, you can see they're sort of like shaped like salt shakers. And actually this is just a small sampling of what they are like. There are many um, turned shapes that are all within the general Muslim design. Um, even the knights are just turned figures. They, this type doesn't have any heads or special characteristics for the knight, whereas this one has a very special characteristic for the knight. These come from the southern Philippines, a place called the Mindanao, uh, Mindanao Island. Um, here's the U.S., here's China, here's the Philippines right here. Here's a closer view. This is the Philippines. Down here, the lowest island, the southernmost island, I should say, is Mindanao. That island was um, basically taken over and established by um, Muslims starting around 1500. And it's no doubt that they brought chess with them then. And uh, no doubt that that's why the uh, modern-day chess sets of that era still have the Muslim look. Of course, they do have our modern chess there, too, but down in the um, island of Mindanao, it's a bit more isolated than the rest of the Philippines. I'll show you some other sets, and some of them show some of the um, intermixing. Here's another typical set. You see this one's a bit bigger. Not actually quite as elaborate as that one. And in this set, all the pieces have this narrow design. Even the bishop is just a cone shape. That's um, more the trend that's come about there in particular. Sets from there can have the more curvaceous Muslim designs, or they can be leaning more towards this cone shape, which is more typical of what the um, Mindanao inhabitants have. Here's another that's similar to that. This one shows a little more mixing. Here you go. There's a knight and a bishop. Now, this knight actually has a horse's head. There's an eye here. And so it makes this shape a horse's neck and this becomes the horse's mane. That's a sort of an elaboration to make it more like the sets that we know. And this one, the bishop, well, that looks almost identical to a bishop in a traditional Mexican carved horn set. So um, you see there, that was probably then the Spanish influence because as you know, the Spanish were very involved in the Philippines and then fighting over the Philippines with the Americans and well, that's kind of what brought the Philippines to the state that they're in right now. In fact, the state of the Philippines is a bit of turmoil and um, it's hard to get these sets sometimes uh, because a lot of times people from the northern Philippines don't want to go down into the southern Philippines and look for indigenous artwork and things like this. So um, some of these have been brought back by servicemen who have been involved in uh, you know, the uh, military bases there and so on. But um, overall, you don't see a whole lot of these. And that's what I like about them. They're very particular to their culture and uh, it's hard to find nowadays where um, Western culture has spread so far and wide. This set 
as a simpler knight. And it shows you this little dot of silver. A lot of them have this. And um, it's a decoration, but it seems to have a little more importance than that. Some of these decorations aren't all that decorative, but still, um, silver, the trade of silver has been an enormous issue in uh, that part of the world. And um, it seems to have a, almost a mystical value in some of these sets. Let's look at another set. This set has even more of the silver. There you go. It's just spotting the knights. And uh, also, uh, we've got it on top of some of these pieces. These have the typical cone shape, but it's been curved a little bit. Nevertheless, very much the more recent development and the more now chess pieces. By the way, the um, island of Mindanao, um, homes people called the Moranao, who are members of a wider ethnic group in that area, the Moro people. It's a Muslim ethnicity, and uh, these are generally known as the Moro chess sets. Now, here's a very different set. And it really shows you what I was talking about, the silver. This silver is not pretty, really. It's kind of splotchy. And look at this. Here's a coin, actually. It's, um, what is that? It's an old American coin. An old Philippine-American coin. It says uh, United States of America on it. It's got the eagle, American eagle. And uh, there it is, adorning a rook in this chess set. Here's one where the coin is so old you can't even see the inscription, or maybe it's been hammered out. And this set also has another interesting characteristic. The pawns here are square, little squares with a pyramid on top. It kind of shows you some of the variety, and there's more variety still in these sets. But um, they have a basic theme, a basic way, you know, they, the knight is always elaborate, always this special shape which is called the oak here design. It's said to represent a serpent, or the wind, or um, a spirit of the sea. Um, make of it what you will. It's a very predominant and a highly esteemed design in that part of the world. I'm going to show you one more set. Now this is the most elaborate of them, the ones I have, and you'll see what I mean. There you go. Now that's a very detailed carving of the Okir design. In most of these sets, the black pieces are made of carabo um, um, horn. A carabo is the typical um, water buffalo of that area. And these are called uh, banati wood. The name of the wood is banati wood, B-A-N-I. B-A-N-A-T-I, Bonnety Wood, and uh, local water buffalo horn. Um, you see, these are very elaborate, and like the typical chess set owner in Mindanao does not have a set like this. These are highly prized sets there. They would be family heirlooms and so on, and uh, so somebody, you know, was able to procure these probably at a good price and a bit of convincing from the original owners. Well, I like these sets a lot. I've always been very fond of them because they're so characteristic of a culture different from ours, yet you know, very much rooted in the chess tradition that our chess comes from. And of course they show something very particular about the culture they're from. Um, show you some books. Here's a famous chess collector's book by uh, Raymond Keane, and I just wanted to show you one page in this because uh, this great big page of knights, knights from the 18th and 19th century. He does make a little representation, a little picture of one of these Moro chess knights. A little more interesting. This is a chess collector's book that seems just about every chess collector has. 
It's called Masterpieces by Gareth Williams. And uh, it's greatly loved because it makes the chess set so clear. Here's a typical Muslim design from Africa. Here's some more typical Muslim designs. And uh, it does have in it a set in question here. And you can see it's got those um, sort of cylindrical tapered shapes for most of the pieces and the typical Hokir design in the knight. And finally, this book just came out last year. It's French. Um, it means the Odyssey of Chess. And uh, the very front page, here you go, with the title, it's got four knights of the Moro style. So, you can see this is a chess boat, a book about chess all over the world, and this author, Jean-Louis Cazot, chose those for the front piece. Well, thanks very much for listening. Once again, ancientchess.com has got a lot of interesting stuff you might want to see. Um, you can look at more chess sets like this. You can um, look at the history of chess. There's a very interesting little write-up about chess throughout the world and where it came from and where it's gone. You can also find some free downloads of uh, chess rules for different types of chess all over the world. And uh, even find uh, sets like this and other interesting international designs available for, available for sale. Thanks, I'm Rick. Hope you enjoyed this. And feel free to look at my other videos. I've got a lot of videos now on YouTube about chess.